Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. We are going to dive into marketing today and not in the typical way that you're, that you may think. We're actually going to look at and talk about how you can get clients so that you can have that financial security and freedom and flexibility while doing meaningful work, but doing it on your own terms, not necessarily crafting a marketing plan based on what you're seeing other people do or purchasing a system that you think you have to have because everybody else is using it. We're going to talk about doing it your way and authentically and genuinely showing up in your marketing as who you are. And you get to learn today how doing what feels right for you is actually going to help you convert more clients because they get to see who you are and you don't have to feel icky about doing something a way that doesn't feel right for you. Okay, so without any more nonsense on my end, I'm going to bring our guest on, Shanna DeWitt. Welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Robin, thanks so much for having me. I am excited to be here and talk all about marketing. Just from the beginning of our conversation before we hit record, I am excited to have the conversation with you. We're very aligned in our beliefs in terms of how we work with our clients, as well as our views on marketing and especially our views on mindset. So this is going to be a really great conversation and I'm really excited to bring it to the listeners because I think it's going to have some not only tremendous value, but inspiration that's going to empower them as well. So that's always a great thing. So before we dive in, will you tell the listeners just a little bit about you and what brought you to this point in your journey? I'm a business coach and a marketing strategist. I didn't start out that way. I started out doing what most people do is I left corporate and did the thing that I was already doing. So I ran a design studio, but I found that I really love the relationship building of getting to work with solopreneurs and helping them build their businesses and People started asking me if I could coach them and I realized that's what I really love to do. So I started to get some certifications. I'm certified in NLP, live coaching, so many different things, because what I had found on my journey and in coaching the people so far is that we all have a mindset issue or pin that we need to get some support around so that we can actually show up in our business the way we want to, the way we can take action, because I am completely passionate about and committed to helping more women create that financial security and flexibility that they really want doing work that they love. And I think when we get to do work that we love, like you and I are doing, it comes through and it helps people see that anything is possible. When we are filled with joy when working with our clients, because we get to help them and serve and really give them that inner security for their own self. I think it's, I don't know, joyful. I don't know other, what other word to use, but I think it's, a, it's such a blessing. And I think when we get to help people do what they want to do and what they're called to do, what their purpose is, how incredible is that? Because it just, it's like creating that ripple effect of good in the world. Because if we get to do what we love to do and we can help other people do what they love to, to do, we're just going to continue that trajectory of inspiration and empowerment. So Yay. I love all this so much already. So let's dive in to talk about marketing. So you talk about when you work with your clients, helping them discover their marketing system. So let's talk about the basis of that. So there are four things that you typically look at first. And I love this so much because it's very similar to how I start when I work with my clients as well. And they're four things that are so very important. And then we'll talk about those like high level, and then we can talk about the specific marketing and the three components of that, that the listeners can then dive into and really transform their own business from that perspective. Definitely. So as a business coach, people are coming to me wanting to know, how can I get more clients? And this is a question that we have at different levels of business. You can have a very successful and full business, but get to a point where you're ready for more. So they always start and look at these four, what I think of as categories or pockets, because when I get a new client, I get so excited. I put on my discovery hat, or that's what I feel like I'm doing is let's lay it all out on the table. Let's look at everything in your business and let's figure out what's going on. So it's like dissecting a problem. 
And the first four places that I look are going to be messaging to make sure that people actually know what you do. Then I'm going to look at your services because sometimes clients will not be meeting their revenue goal, but it's not about getting more clients. It's about shifting their services or their suite of services and setting themselves up for success. The third place that I like to look is in their strategy. So this is where we take a really good look at the three parts of their funnel to see where there might be a clog because we want our funnels to flow. We just want to be able to put more clients in, get more visible and have everything just work for us. And that's really where the last por portion of that, the last place we look is mindset because sometimes we don't have a problem. We just think we have a problem or we have some kind of issue that's making us just, we have everything in place, but we're just not showing up the way that we need to be really consistent and get results. But the place that we really dig into the signature marketing system is as after we've looked at all of those things, then we can create the signature marketing system. And the reason why is because if you don't have good mindset, you're not going to show up and do anything. We all, we've all been there. If your messaging isn't clear about what you do, you can market yourself to death, but it's still not going to get you quiet. So we check all of those boxes first. And then we, like I said, take a look at their funnel inside of marketing. And that's how we start to develop the signature marketing system. What this actually means is that you decide exactly how you want to get clients, how you want to show up and attract leads, how you want to nurture those leads, and what sales looks like for you versus trying to adapt something that somebody else is doing or something that's trending because like trends come and go. But the basics of marketing are always the same. And when you know how to get clients, then you can do that on repeat. There's absolutely nothing stopping you from growing your business as big as you want to. I love that so much. And the thing I think I love the most is that you and I both are of the mindset that you don't have to have fancy bells and whistles to make your marketing work. And that's something that I know a lot of my clients have come to me and they've purchased ClickFunnels or other systems that they look great, but ultimately they're hard to use. And you are using someone else's platform and it doesn't feel comfortable to you. And that has happened so many times. And then in their investments, and you really can do all of this and set this up for basically free or for just the cost of your email marketing system that you're using. And I think that's so important for people to recognize that you really can do this authentically to you so that you don't have to feel frustrated and overwhelmed and try to learn a system before you can even implement a plan for your own personal business. You know, I think the other thing that people need to know or recognize is that even if you have this system and you have everything in place, so a person comes here and then it takes them there, you still need to know how to sell. Mm -hmm. It would be nice. And I think that there was a time where this definitely worked more than it does right now, where you could give a presentation, do a workshop, put people through a funnel, sell whatever it is you're selling. But more and more people want to know you, they want to work with you. They want that high touch and you have to know how to sell. You have to know how to talk to people and build relationships. And you can't just hide behind your computer. There's no way around that. There's no system. There's no software that you can buy that's going to do all of that for you. No. And that's why I talk a lot about building your personal brand or creating your personal brand as part of the foundation so that you can have long-term success. Because if you're not representing yourself as who you are, no one's going to trust you. And we know, of course, that trust determines buying practices. So if your personal brand is what other th people think, say, and feel about you, your branding is telling everybody what makes you unique. How can you differentiate yourself? And there are so many factors we can take a look at to differentiate ourselves. Part of selling is helping people get to know you and understand who you are. Because if you're not building that relationship with them, you're not building trust. That's why messaging and having that clarity in who you are and what you do, the problem you can solve for your idle people, that is so critical to be able to control that perception of what people think, say, and feel about you. Yeah, I think that most people feel like selling starts at the bottom of your funnel but it starts at the top. It starts it in your Instagram bio. When you tell people what it is that you do, what problem that you solve for people, because that is part of selling is just telling people how you can work with them. I didn't go to sales school, but that's one of the many things that you learn as an <laughs> entrepreneur. 
And if you are struggling with that, just know that it takes time. It takes, mm-hmm. it's a, it's just something that you get better at the more you do. But I think reshaping what sales is and where that actually falls into the scope of your marketing is for my clients, it always takes a load off. They feel like, oh, it's not what I thought it was. And it takes a lot of pressure off. I don't know if you find that to be true with your clients mm-hmm. too. Absolutely, I do. And I'm going to link in the show notes an episode where I interviewed Emmy Kirshner because we talked all about this and how if you come from a place of service, you don't feel like you're selling. And the reality is we all have a gift, a talent. We have had our own journeys, our experiences in life that have led us right to where we are today and has given us the ability and the expertise to now serve other people, to help other people. And I know you had a journey with with your life and becoming an entrepreneur and mindset. I had the same experience. So now we can help other people do this more effectively, with more ease, with more grace and more confidence. And I think that's really important. But if we aren't selling. And when I talk about selling, I'm talking about really starting by showing people who you are, having 100% clarity on who you are and what you do and how you do it and who you serve. And you start telling people all of these things, you're already selling just by communicating. And so when you get on that discovery call and people already have an idea of who you are and how they can work with you and how you can help them, you're coming from a place of service. You're not coming from a place of, oh, here, da, 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 this is what I'm going to do for you. And here's why you should hire me. You can just sit back and serve. And that way you're doing a service for them versus if you're not doing these things, you're doing a disservice because how are they going to find you? How are they going to know that you can help them? Yes, I agree 100%. It starts at the beginning. Sales is not something that is just when they get through your funnel, all of a sudden now it's sales. Exactly. I think most of us feel like sales is more like a blind date when it's more like this long online relationship that you've had and you finally get to meet each other in person. Totally different thing. And I think about selling as an invitation to for me to help you with the make the most impact that I can, because you can get plenty of content and have a Facebook group and a podcast and all the things. But as much as I'm giving and teaching and sharing the most that I can help you, the biggest impact I can have on your business is when we work one-on-one. And that's what I'm selling is the most impact that I can have for you. I agree. And I think that's a really important thing to talk about because I've had other people on this show and we've talked about how important it is to have that, I guess, additional set of eyes on your business. And when you work with a coach one-on-one, that is such a bonus. And you work with your clients the way I work with my clients and having someone else come in and do that deep dive that it's more of an eagle eye view versus you looking at it on a flat plane because we don't see things and we don't know what we don't know. And I think sometimes we get so in our own heads that we, we lose that sense of clarity. We lose that ability to see that what we're saying isn't all inclusive or doesn't quite explain exactly everything we do. And case in point, it's funny because I was talking to someone recently and I was telling her exactly what I do. And she's like, I didn't know you had all that tech stuff. I'm like, you know what? You're right. I don't really talk about that. And so it was a shift in, okay, if you want to learn SEO, I got you. If you want to learn systems, tools, processes, automation, I got you. But a lot of times we don't realize what a gift certain things we can do really are or really is. You know what I'm saying? So it's interesting how just having someone else's eyes on you and your business is a tremendous bonus. Exactly. That's one of the best things about working with someone. So they can really take a look at your business and help you see things that you just didn't see, see your blind spots. Also, I'm not emotionally tied to your business. I don't have the same fears, beliefs, stories, all of that kind of stuff. So that's why it's also interesting. You can get huge mindset shifts. Your clients Mm -hmm. can while they are learning more about how to grow their business. And I think that's just, that's not really something that's always easy to articulate as far as sales go, but it's definitely a bonus outcome. 
Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about that, Shanna. Let's talk about how our beliefs can hold us back. And I think that we've both experienced this. And I think all of my customers, all of my clients experience this as well, that we don't see the possibilities sometimes because we have questions like what if, or we have those thoughts of, well, and so is already doing this. So what value could I bring? All of these things, these self-doubts, the lack of confidence in ourselves. Let's talk a little bit about that and how people can start shifting some of that mindset to recognize that they can create a relationship through their marketing efforts and then move forward through there. And maybe we even should start with that three-part funnel per se from a marketing perspective and then loop in the mindset because that really is the last piece that has to be solidified before people can move forward. Okay. So I get really excited when I think about sales funnels. I love to talk about them. So I hope that everyone else is going to love this too, but your sales funnel, if you want to visualize it, it looks like a triangle, just like a funnel. But what is important to know is the reason that it's shaped like that is because if it's three main parts. So the first part, I think about visibility. This is how you're going to show up, how you're going to meet people. If you wanted to meet people in your local town, it would be like going to a networking event or something like that. So we're just putting ourselves out there. But the thing is that's passive when you're talking about digital marketing, because you can put a post on Instagram or Facebook, you can put up a blog post, but you're not as likely, not like you don't ever, but the interaction piece, you don't really know how many people have looked at that. You don't really know what's happening there. So it's very passive where you start to move down the funnel or it gets a little narrower is if you put a post on Instagram and then someone sends you a DM and you start to have a conversation. And then from that conversation, you lead them maybe to your Facebook group. And so then you've moved down to the middle of your funnel, which is where you nurture your leads. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this can all look like whatever you want. I have a client who's a six figure business owner and she's not even on social media. So this can look like whatever you want, but I think that what people forget are all the touch points along the way. But if you actually draw out your sales funnel and you think about that, how do I lead people? So that's the flow. How do I lead people from, let's say you use Instagram, you decide, you decide I want to show up on Instagram. This is how I want to attract leads. You also have to decide what is my process for nurturing leads. And so that's your client journey. How do they get from this part of the funnel to the next part of the funnel? And I find that most entrepreneurs have it where it's in blocks, but they don't really think as much about the connection piece between those two. That makes all the difference in the world. At the bottom of your funnel, of course, this is sales. But as we we're talking about throughout this episode is that sales really starts at the top. So a lot of that is in your content and messaging, but where I see people who have massive followings or tons of engagement and they're not getting sales, I look at that middle part of their funnel because most of us, we're service providers. We love to serve. We love to teach. We love to give value and we suck at sales. Mm -hmm. And even I would say half the people that think that they are selling are actually not selling. And so if that sounds like you look at that middle part of your funnel, because you should be selling while also giving away value. But most people feel like well, I'm not nurturing if I'm also selling, like they've got the give, but they forget about the ask portion. If you're not selling, then that's where you need to start to get more clients. And then of course the bottom part is sales. But the truth is like we were talking about, by the time someone gets on a phone call with you, they're pretty much sold. They just want to feel comfortable and actually buying from you. They just want that last little bit of confidence that they really are making a good decision. And that's your job. Just show up, answer their questions, be yourself, right? It's not to convince them to buy something. It's not to sell them on you. It's not a blind date. That's not what we're doing here. We are just creating a space for somebody to feel good and ask us questions and then follow up so that I think that's the other thing that I've noticed a lot is people don't have, they get to sales and they're like, I'm on the call. I'm going to sell. I'm done. You're not done. You're not done. 50% of sales happen in the follow-up. So you also have to create touch points for how you're going to connect with people after you've had a phone call. Absolutely. It's yeah. so important. It doesn't stop when you just hang up. And it's an interesting statistic that 50% 
happen on the call, 50% are follow up. And as entrepreneurs, as part of this nurture component of our marketing program is we have to think about handling objections because when you get on the call, one of the biggest objections that I get is price. People are so afraid to invest money. And so to be able to address some of those objections, addressing the objection of time, I'm not sure I'm going to have enough time. There's so many objections that people can bring to you in those discovery calls. So being able to address those in your nurturing is also very important as well because you're being proactive and it makes your job when you do finally get on that call much easier. So I have a question for you because when you talk, and I'm sure the listeners are going to have this question because Back in, I guess, one of the first episodes we aired this year, I interviewed Tanya Dalton, and she was telling us how she was going off of social media completely in 2022. Now, she already had a huge following, so her email list was already huge. So I'm curious, how is this person marketing in this digital world without having a social media account? Referrals. Referrals are yep. huge. Collaborations. There, there really are so many different ways. You don't have to be on social media, but if you decide that you're going to be on social media and that's going to be one of your ways, then you have to go all in. It, it doesn't right. matter. Honestly, I don't do that much on social media, but I have a podcast that I have been doing for four years and I have a Facebook group that I'm crazy active in and give away tons of value and content. And that's just where I want to be. Mm -hmm. But there was a time where it was different and I was showing up on social media a lot. And then before that, I ran a six figure business and wasn't on social media. I love that. You just said that because I should, I guess, air quotes, preach email marketing because social media could go away at any given point in time. But if we build our business around the email list and then tap into the resource of our clients, Ryan Holiday has a book called Growth Hackers. And when you read that book, he talks about that. It's your ability to growth hack or to become viral is other people spreading the word about you. So you have to be very strategic about that, but it's a great way when you nurture your audience, even if someone doesn't hire you, maybe you do have that discovery call with them and they don't hire you but you are front of mind. They now know everything that you could do for someone. So the next time they're having a conversation with someone that needs your services, they're going to refer you because you've built that relationship. You've established that trust. So I love that you said that, that there are other ways. We don't have to depend on social media. And so many people and so many people are just frustrated and feel like they're fighting against the algorithm. And you don't have to do that to have a successful marketing funnel. Yeah, you really don't. There are so many different things that you can do. And that's why part of the system of figuring out what it's going to be for you is thinking about what you like to do and how you want to show up. I used to write so many long in-depth blog posts but I don't do that anymore. I mostly do video content. I still like to write, but it's just easier and faster. And so you've got to think about your life and your capacity and the, whatever's going to work for you. I have a client who has, has had to make such a big mindset shift because she has struggled tremendously with feeling like she can't write content. Actually, I see that a lot. I've, I've mm -hmm. had several clients who feel like their crux is being able to write content, but they're doing tons of video. I'm like, the thing is that you're still putting out content video is performing much better in the algorithm. Like, why are you, why is this so difficult for you? Which brings us back to what you were saying, mindset and the way that mm -hmm. it can keep you from showing up in your business. That is just, that is one example. And that's a really good example. I think we can start talking about mindset right there because we often think there's a problem in our business when the reality is the problem is in our thoughts. So she has something that is already working, but because her mindset around what she's doing isn't pure, isn't positive, all those cells in her body that are sending out vibrations are sending out vibrations of doubt and overwhelm and frustration versus video is working. So bring on the clients. Yeah. Because the simple fact is that our beliefs determine our actions and our thoughts create our beliefs. And it has everything to do with your business. I could give you a million examples, 
but it makes such a big impact. The first belief that you really have to have is belief in yourself. So you absolutely have to be a thousand percent sold on your ability to solve this problem, whatever it is that you're selling. Because if you don't believe it, I promise you, nobody else is going to believe it either. And it's going to make you, it make it so hard for you to be able to show up, market your business. How can you get on a sales call and sell somebody on something? If you're thinking, wow, this really is expensive. That's so much different than, wow, this person's getting a great value. I cannot wait to be able to help you with this problem that you have completely yeah. different. And I've seen clients go on multiple sales calls as they're like trying to get better at this. And then one day it all clicks in and they're like, I did a sales call today and I sold my services. And I have to say, you've been doing sales calls. The only thing that is different is you showed up differently today and it equaled a sale. That's the only thing that's different here. I love that you just said that the mindset of, oh, this really is expensive. But if you were to sit down and listeners, this is a great exercise to do. Sit down and look at the ROI that you are giving your clients. And if you are a mindset coach and not a business coach, what are you doing for them to give them additional value in their life? Can you put a dollar sign on that? And sometimes you can't put a dollar sign on that, but sometimes those things mean more value and more long-term impact for that person than even a dollar amount. But what was funny, my coach pointed out to me, and this was a few couple of years ago, but I had a client and one session I saved her like saved slash made $78,000. That was in like an hour's time, just by having my eyes on her business, pulling back the things she didn't need to spend money on and giving her revenue generating ideas. Like that it is something that if you're hesitant about charging or you're hesitant about the amount that you're charging, look at the value you're providing on both those spectrums, because you look at lifelong potential that your clients are now going to have versus what they would have had if they weren't hiring you. And I think that helps you build that sense of confidence that, okay, this may cost a lot of money, but the value is tremendous. And there's no doubt in my mind that you're going to get equal or more value just from investing this and having me help you. Yeah. Another really good exercise for anyone who feels like they need a little bit of a boost of confidence is the five whys, which works really well for this. So you can question yourself and say, so whatever it is that you do, the problem that you saw, maybe let's just say that you're a website designer. And then you would say, why is this important? Because people need websites. So why is this important? Because people have to have a website so that they can make money. Why is mm -hmm. this important? It's important for these moms to be able to make money so they can stay and how their kids are going to grow up. And then you're like, whoa. What I make websites for people so that they can have a better, stronger family and impact their kids. Yeah, this is amazing. I, the work that I do matters and it means something. And I 100% should get paid for it. There's a trade-off. The trade-off is worth it. And then you can see it from your client's perspective. Like when you can communicate back to messaging, if you can communicate why this work that you do is so powerful, your clients will be ready and just excited to pay you. So let me get this straight. I pay you, you make me a website, which allows me to be home with my kids and have the kind of family that I've always wanted. Yes, sign me up. Yeah, I love it. That's another great exercise and really good because I think sometimes when we are in that frame of self-doubt, we lose the perspective and per perspective is a choice. We get to choose how we perceive everything in our lives and hours and hours. But I think it's really important to say that before we close out that your mindset being positive and healthy is what's going to help you get clarity around that messaging. Yes, it's last in that list, but it, everything comes full circle. And I like to say our thoughts create our results. And when you think about it, and I love your beliefs, create your actions. And I tend to start with your beliefs, your thoughts, your feelings and emotions, and then your actions and behaviors, which produce your results. And so it's like, it's cyclical. 
And if you're not working on those thoughts and beliefs, then your emotions, your feelings, your actions are going to fall short. So I love that we had this conversation. It's so valuable for so many people. Any last second thoughts, advice that you want to deliver? And you've given us so much value already. I would just say that I call it mindset work because it is something that you have to work out. It's not something that you're going to master in a day and just keep on. It's okay to continually cultivate belief in yourself. And it's also okay for you to get some support around that because you can borrow someone else's belief like your coach while you cultivate that belief in you, but everything is possible for you. Oh, I love that so much. Listeners, I am not going to say another word because that was such an incredibly powerful ending that everything is possible for you as long as you believe in yourself. Shanna, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. I appreciate the conversation and I know the listeners are going to enjoy it too. Listeners, if you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful, please share it on your social media, share it with a friend or family member who you know is struggling in that place of feeling unworthy or feeling self-doubt or not confident in what they are being called to do, share this episode with them because I think it can really shed a lot of light to other people. And if you would be so kind, please leave us a rating and review because that is how more people get to hear our exceptional guests like Shanna and the other episodes as well. So thank you everyone for being here and I will see you next week.